Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4, the new order as Siberian Free Territory. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So you don't have any template for the early infantry fighting vehicle. That's okay, don't worry about that. And we do we need to convince any of these other territories to actually vote for our legislation? No, it's a 5-4 vote, so it looks like we should be able to expand our volunteer programs. But we don't need to really do that anymore, right? I mean, manpower is already completely okay, so I'm not too, too concerned about our manpower issues anymore. Um, are we training up more troops? We are, slowly but surely. And you are, yes, 30 days of motion will go through. We'll undo the damage of reactionary and authoritarian school systems. And after that, what do we want to do next? We can only do this tree for now. So original leadership or faith is newly inaugurated. George Wallace has been elected president of the United States. Definitely different than our campaign as the United States uh, a few months ago. Established? I mean, we, what we want to do is we want to be able to take over, you know, the, the east. We want to take over all the territory in Siberia to kind of un unify all the land that we possibly can. And aside from that, so you are war support. Stability goes up. A little bit of manpower loss. I mean, where we're at, 55% libertarian. So I think I think going for this one's okay. We'll see. So sculptors of the past, Yuri Glaslov dug through his cabinets before him. It would be under C, right? He was sure of it. He would never give the state credit, but for what it was worth, they knew how to keep records. To his left, General Ivan Sepanov, his right, Mikhail Klyshnikov. An outsider really demanding something to be done about all the men sitting around Antony Mishrolkino. There's some comedy to be to the situation. The key members of security council, the men responsible for the ascendancy of anarchism pilfering around the college campus. It was very important to Yuri and Zipanov, but it didn't stop the two from seeing the humor in it. All that training was worthwhile, Ivan. They ever teach you how to pillage a college in a war school? Zeppelin only scolded. Continuing to go through the files before him, Glaskov chuckled to himself and continued to flick through the millions of papers occupying the cabinet. Found something, said Kalisnikov, uh, pr pr uh, producing a manila folder. On the cover of a proud symbol of the hammer of sickle, Spepanov took the document from Mikhail and flipped through the first page. Curriculum of the Union of so Soviet Socialist Republics, it read, bold and spelled out in capital letters. Spepanov handed the document to Glaskov, who at least attempted to read each page diligently before Spepanov took the folder back. You can read on your own time. Well, we have, uh, what have we, wait, no, we have what we're looking for now. This, along with all the other ones from the other college in the city, should be more than enough to build an adequate curriculum. Ivan, you're too quick to accept Soviet teachings. We can keep looking. I'm sure we can find curriculum that suits the people's visions of the future, Glaskov said. Pavanov shook his head and countered. I hate them as much as you do, Yuri. But I think it would be the best if we don't restrict knowledge, but allow people to choose what is best. Yuri considered this for a time being. So we need to lose uh, some stability. That's positive goes up a little bit. There's fall teaching the states. We're going to go for, I mean, it's a negative 10%. I mean, it's authoritarian democracy and authoritarian socialism. So we're actually kind of okay, I think, taking that choice. Because, I mean, the libertarians still have a overwhelming majority of popular support within the country. So we, we should be okay for now. It's going to give us a little bit more manpower. But again, like, the manpower really doesn't do too much. The South African Civil War has ended. And it looks like South Africa did survive, but the Boer Republic did take um, its own ground. Yes, yeah, so you're now in the OFN. A growing black army control to get a little bit more political power. And you're all in the Africa Shield. Because you are once again united under a Borman. So we'll see kind of what you guys do. Will you actually integrate these guys back into your faction? I'm not too, too sure, to be quite honest. And let's see. Well, what can George Wallace actually do as United States President? No more interference, defederalization, the dirty state of schooling. There's a lot of options here. But I guess this is for eight years. Indian market. Doing business in Iberia, Canada, and Australia. Fighting tyrannies in 1776. OFN. Down under. Oh, that's a Tokyo. So it looks like that. There's probably like some sort of meeting. I'm not too, too sure. But we'll kind of see what happens there. 
I, I, I don't know exactly what pass George Wallace can take. And I did see the youth change into the National Protection Army. It was ultra-nationalist. Two choices here. What do we want? Invest in construction. We could. Construction B goes up. But it adds so much money to our national debt. Because right now, people are saying that I'm losing $3 million. Which is not great. So if we're losing $3 million, I'm gonna f I'm fine reducing construction costs a little bit. Mostly because we're not really building too, too much. We do actually have a... 40% utilization. Okay, so we basically know because we're a good factory. That's fine. And there's been a coup in Scotland. It looks like they have now gone despot. So good for them, I guess. We will try to avoid that same fate, Scotland, if we're lucky. It'll be done in just a mere moment. Then we'll try to strike a balance of power. Reduces the administration straight on our state. And, you know, let's enshrine the material rights. We do get better weapons as well. What else do we need? I mean, we can still keep going through it. I mean, it's 1965. We can even go two more levels up. And I, th I think that's the right choice for us. Mass production methods 2 is supposed to be finished. After that, we'll probably go for the next level of support equipment. All of that seems pretty alright, if you ask me. Of course, you guys are all still fighting it out. Who's going to win? I don't think we care so much. As long as they constantly are just weakening each other. We, we should be looking relatively okay. Hey, what are you guys doing? You guys are fighting amongst each other. Cossack Social Republic. So you guys are now in a pretty big war as well. You're on my border, but I don't think we're going to be moving in this direction quite yet. Because right now, like, we can't attack until Jan like 1969. That's still four years from now. Which, like, that, that's a while, right? Like, will we even be finished all these... We'll probably be finished all this stuff before 1969. Starting the Revolution. Liberation War. We probably want to do the Army of Liberation. War support stability going up. But we, I think we do... I want to do some, um... Yeah, the Africa Shield has been broken. Let's see if they actually go to war with each other. I've never seen that happen because last time, again, we did just win our war in Africa. Different effects depending on our policy. I think we do want to go for the policy of liberation. When we have the choice. So you're now finished. Let's establish the Resource Council. Seems like an okay place for us to start. To be pro or reactive. Mikhail Klitschkov scanned over the proposal on his desk. This plan, authored by Spetnov, seemed like his usual stick. Mikhail caref, uh, cared very little for anarchism, even less so for Spetnov. Mikhail liked numbers. Numbers made sense in the world where nothing else did. Even if he had never read Bukhanin or any, or have only heard of Makhno in passing, Mikhail knew how to make things work, and even Yuri had to admit it every now and then. It's a lot of zeros on the figure here, Ivan, Mikhail said, peering over his glasses. I'm not going to bore you with the ideological implications of your little anti-poverty, or shall I say anti glass glove proposal here. What's more important to me is how you will bring this about when I'm already uh, differing in sizable portion of our budget to keep our your boy stocked up with the most of the up-to-date guns money can buy. So I'll lean forward, folding his hands on Mikhail's desk. I assure you, companion Kleshnikov, what I'm offering is not only feasible, but is necessary. We ought to be actively distributing the wealth to the people. Think about how many lives we, we could be saving and improving with this landmark agenda. Mikhail sighed and shook his head. Cut the shit, Ivan. I'm not Yuri. I'm not going to be swayed by the people's struggle or whatever you call that horseshit you spelled at me. I'm looking at this from a solely pragmatic point of view. That's my job, yeah? I balance the books. You shoot the reactionaries. I don't see why you're even here. The current system of communal self-management works fine. They take the money they need and put it to where they see fit. Why do we even have to get involved in the whole process? Then I'll scold at Mikhail. Visibly angry, but not willing to drop his act just yet. It's important not only to myself, Mikhail, but to the army as well. Think about whose family this will save. Think about what they'll... Though they'll think of the news breaks that Mikhail Kotov shot down the agenda. All while securing a not-so-small fortune. Mikhail glared at Spetnov. The two shared an intense battle just between each other's eyes. Well, I think we want to get a little bit more... Party rate will begin to improve. We get a little bit more uh, support for a libertarian socialist. 
You're more improvement for despotism. High in health. Waited. No unemployment subsidies or trinkets. Public with universal health care. So, which which way do we want to go for this? Because right now we're at 35-50. So about 50-50 split on this right now. Effective change is... Monthly poverty change goes down. Stability goes up. Income rate goes up. We're also losing stability there. More stability, more support. Going to cost us a lot of money. Poverty or, or poverty rate just improves a little bit on its own. Well, right now we're, I mean, it's trending upwards, which I'm assuming is good. We're actually getting a lot of industrial export. These things are kind of neutral. Or we just change laws. You know, let's just make this a little bit better. Current development, monthly rate's 4.5. We need to get to 240. So it's still going to take some time. But I don't think we want to slip too far into getting more despot within the country. So I'm, I'm not too sure. I think there's probably like a coup or something like that, which we're going to try to avoid if we can. Uh, we'll have to go for support equipment just for a little bit more defense for our troops is nice. Our research speed still being negative 15% is not what we want, obviously. But we'll, uh, we'll deal with that as it comes. So for us to do this, what do we need to do? Congress of Cats has concluded, which I'm assuming is doing all four, or all five of these options. We hold the last communal congress in the city of Cats for relocating to Nova Sibritsk. Political power goes up a little bit as well, which wouldn't be bad. Reunites large cities into autonomous communal governments. Decreases the influence of the church. We will present anarchism as a solution to problems facing Russia. And liberty all-encompassing and eternal. I mean, all of those seem like okay choices. I mean, the political power gains, stability goes up. Division of defense actually goes plus 5%. It's not bad either. Okay, so everybody in West Russia is now at war with each other. Yeah, so you're fighting down in the south. Something happened down here, but I didn't actually hear what it was. So we'll kind of we'll see who comes out on top again. What we really want is just them to keep fighting each other more or less forever. Because the, the more they fight, the weaker they're going to be when we eventually come and try to take uh, the territory. So we get the resource council, follow that up by striking the balance of power. The Battle of Barcelona. So it looks like there might be a civil war going on in Spain. We do need some rubber. But I don't have any factories that I can uh, possibly trade with, unfortunately. So Iberia, are you going to split apart? It's entirely possible. Well, we'll see like some sort of civil war going on there. So what are you doing? You're doing sweeping the rest. That does not involve evading me, right? I just want to make sure... Free aviators, Yugra and Zolitsk. On Yugra. Aviators. Okay, so nothing that I can see that involves them attacking us. Even though I probably want to fight Omsk sooner rather than later. Because we do by far have the largest army in Russia, I think. We have a lot of manpower too. We should actually be training up more troops. We have 6,000 equipment. Why not go for like another eight? Do we have equipment for that? Mostly, we're seeing a little bit of anti-tank. The planes are not as meaningful here. And of course, there are planes to fly over there. Are you close to air support? Yes, you are. You're doing a lot of good stuff for us. And then it looks like you guys are still fighting your war amongst each other. That is completely okay. Germany, I'm sure, is probably going to invade Poland at some point. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. And who knows what Burgundy's doing? Burgundy, I think at any point, could just decide to nuke the entire planet. Which wouldn't be great, I'll admit. Uh, we'll also probably want you... No, I, I think you're actually kind of fine where you are. Gotta get two more invasion plans just ready to go. Just in case. Are you on... You're on regular. I wouldn't even mean. I wouldn't even mind putting you on very aggressive. 
We do have 31 political power. Is there anything we would want from this, though? Just another lock. Expanding military infrastructure wouldn't be bad. Our industrial will slowly improve. Manpower we don't really need. More poverty rate. You know what? Two civilian factories. I'll take them because I think we do kind of need them. So we got two supporting. So we need to get at least three of you guys to not hate us. 40 political power. Well, not another I mean, do I need 40 political power? You can have that. Tanatuva. $1 million really doesn't even affect this at all, really, at all. 750 manpower. Oh, we can easily afford that. So that should get us now to 5-4. With support being on our side. Yes, it does. So we'll get this uh, two civilian factories very soon. And democracy has returned to Italy, so congratulations to them. I mean, they're still despotic, but we'll kind of see which way they end up shifting. And we do have two more units as well. So let's put you into blue army. Then we'll go for the last congress of Kansk. And we'll see what these guys are um, wanting to do with this. So once we get you up to 24, I don't know who the next person is going to be. And you declare a war on this guy. 8 to... 8 to 8 divisions. So, unless Alms has some really good modifiers, which they might. I'm not too sure. Okay, it looks like the socialists have lost their war in Kazakhstan. The fascists are now in charge of the region. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much to us because we're going to kill them no matter what. And Lexi looks like the West, Rus the West Russian Revolutionary Front is probably going to fall to Samara, which I believe is also fascist. Yes, they are. So, it looks like all of the, the little socialist countries within Russia are starting to fall apart. Aside from us, we are still strong. And also, maybe you guys will survive as well. We'll kind of see. Which you mean you have 10 to 12 against... I mean, it's 10 to 12 against 9. So, I mean, they're starting to build up relatively large armies, which I don't like. For obvious reasons, I'd prefer them to be very, very weak. So what can we do with um? Well, oh, convince territories. Yeah, that's fine. And Pakistan's become independent. A very, very thin Pakistan. Maybe they get territory from Afghanistan as well, or they go to war with each other. I'm not too sure. What has happened here? So these guys have formed one massive Africa. That is currently um, leading by the Burgundian system, which I believe is like... Is it the furthest right you can be? Um, let me just take a quick look here. It's not country list. It's... I mean, it doesn't show like the list here. But I think the Burgundian system... Is either the furthest right or second furthest. I don't know if ultra-nationalists are considered further right than the Burgundian system. I'm not too sure. But now that that's finished, can I do the other f things as well? Maybe not. We'll see you after we done uh, read this. Do Svodinia. You already walked briskly, walked briskly past the proud gates of Kansk and towards the General Assembly for what could be his last time. He shivered in Siberian frost, his multiple layers of clothing doing little to protect him from the cold. I mean, it's June, so it shouldn't be that cold. Anyways. It'd be the cold air of the city, the city he built that he loved, a city where it all began. He sauntered to the gate, so many engravings on from what... From so many expeditions. It began to set in with him. This was real. Him, Yuri, Glasgow was forging a new Russia hand in hand with his communal brothers. It felt so final. There was no going back now. He had led too many armies. Too many have died. He must charge ahead at full speed now. In action, now would only spell the death of the anarchist movement. Yuri pushed off the, from the gate and continued to walk to the General Assembly, throwing open a door as Yuri saw the usual suspects. Spatinov at the desk, writing something. Valativ gesturing to a map directed to his cities labeled friendly and opposed, and Mishako attempting to cross out all the ones labeled friendly and hundreds of other people chattering about the assembly hall. Yuri smiled to himself. They were a ragtag bunch. He found that fitting for the torchbearers of the anarchism. It ought to be a movement of so many people from all different backgrounds. Yuri shook hands with Valativ and nodded in respect to Mr. Oz before taking a seat at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, at the last time... As the last time us trickled into the chilly Siberian uh, morning, I would like to say a few words before we begin. Lazarov stood in awe of the crowd 
of the mo of the movement. What we have done here is what the nightmares of Zars and fascists alike have made of. We have stood up together. Through loyalty to each other, we have freed our people of the tyranny of the state. But much more is to come. We have a lot before us. I can tell you it won't simply be enjoyable all the time. It will be hard. All good things in life are fought for and not handed to us. We have fought for freedom here, but I cannot sleep at night, companions, knowing that there's still so much work left to do. You're already watching the doors of the assembly close. I believe you're all here. If you will take your seats, we can begin. Okay, so this is not, is not considered finished yet. So, let us... Let's take... Let's present anarchism as the solution for the problems facing Russia. Seems like an okay place for us to start. You guys are now fighting amongst each other. I mean, that's kind of okay in the sense that if you're fighting amongst each other, one, you're going to cause casualties, and two, it's only one tag guy I have to fight instead of multiple smaller countries. So when the time for unification comes, it does make our life somewhat easier. We do have 81 political powers. Is there anything else we need to do? Get re um, Increases GDP. Wouldn't be a bad thing, I think. Slightly decreased coin time, increase the GDP. $150 million, though. Moderately increase the GDP. I'm fine with that. Uh, we need to increase our GDP at some point. Because right now, the economy is not doing as well as I would like. I, I would like our economy to be booming, but right now it's kind of just like, eh. But I do think this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you for watching. My name is Anthony. If you've enjoyed, remember thumbs up. Now, enjoy, close thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.